All right, well, good evening, everybody. And I'm ready to play the next concert for you. Tonight's performance is the next in my Music by Decade series. And as I've mentioned in the past, I'm dividing the 1920s into two parts. And uh, there's really only one reason for that, and that's because that's how Johnny Maddox did it. This series of concerts is inspired partly by uh, a bunch of song medleys that he used to use to open the night as a warm-up when he was playing in these old-fashioned nightclubs where he used to work. And uh, he would play continuously for almost 30 minutes without stopping and just play one chorus of a song and then go into the next one. And that's how he warmed up. And I always wanted to try and learn all of the songs in these medleys as a sort of challenge to myself. So I've just finally decided to do it as part of my virtual concerts, which has worked out pretty well so far. I think people have been getting a kick out of it. It's kind of fun. You can try and name all the tunes there in the chat and uh, uh, see how many that you can guess. Now, there are some that are maybe not quite that well known, so I thought I'd go ahead and name those for you. Uh, a couple of those tunes that you might not recognize include songs like that little boy of mine, a Wayne King hit, and uh, My Mother's Eyes, which was a Georgie Jessel song, and we're going to do a Gay Caballero, a song that was a hit for uh, Frank Crummett, and uh, there's a couple of tunes in this medley that were not necessarily written in the exact years that uh, I'm describing. That's because they were popular during those years. One is the Charleston. And then uh, another one that you will hear is called Marquita, a love song of old Mexico, which I think was written way back about 1913. And, uh, but the reason I'm playing it now is because it was popular in the late 1920s. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be happy to take requests after this opening medley, uh, but for the first 30 minutes or so, I'm just gonna keep playing. See how many of these tunes you can recognize and I will talk to you some more after this medley. We're going to do the latter part of the 1920s. You might call it a Charleston medley, a speakeasy medley, or a prohibition medley from 1925 through 1929.
Thank you very much, everyone. Well, there is the 1925 through 29 medley. As you can see, laid out here on the piano, I had to practice a lot of songs this week that either I had never played or hadn't played in a long time, and I got through it. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, again, these medleys are taken from these old tapes that I have of Johnny Maddox. That one was exactly the songs that he played, and in the same order as a tape recording, live from the Red Slipper Lounge at the Cherry Creek Inn in Denver, Colorado in the mid-1960s. That album was later released on a CD called Live at the Red Slipper Room. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't a very good recording. You know, the piano was out of tune and, and it sounded very tinny, but um, I always loved the songs. And so I finally challenged myself to learn all of them. And we'll, we'll do this one more time and do the 1930s decade a couple of weeks from now, maybe three or four weeks from now, something like that. <laughs> well, while I'm taking a little breather here, let me think and, and make a, an announcement or two. Uh, we're a little further along in the concert than usual than when I normally mention this, but I do accept virtual tips for these performances. If you're so inclined, there's um, PayPal and Venmo information on all three websites. Speaking of which, let me check all three websites and make sure they're all working. It looks like they are. <sighs> well, it looks like I might have one new person here on Twitch. I'm, I'm getting darn close to 100 subscribers on Twitch. I think it was 85 or something last time I checked, so please go over there and subscribe to me on Twitch if you haven't done that yet. Dave says, piano sounds great tonight. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, although it has been a month or two since Chris Drury's been here, he's coming back to tune this coming weekend. So next Sunday's concert will sound even better. Now, let me pull out my other list. <laughs> I had to take a break after that. <laughs> and I've got a few things that I had planned ahead of time that I want to play for you uh, that is outside of the opening medley. And here's one of these songs. Actually, I need to go back over to Facebook. Uh, this is for Bill Huffman. Bill, I hope you're listening. Um, send me a note here in the chat. You're usually on Facebook, I think. If not, send it to me on YouTube. And um, anyway, you've asked me for this song a couple of times. So I decided to dig it out and play it for you. This is from the early 20s, not the period we're really discussing. <clears throat> this is a great song by Walter Donaldson. I did a whole program devoted to his music. He was, he, he, he was that good. It's a song from 1920 called My Little Bimbo Down on the Bamboo Isle. And this is another song that Johnny taught me. I learned this and we recorded it on the CD we did together and played it as a medley with another tune from about the same period. And uh, so I'll do that for you now as a medley of two songs, the same way we did it. My Little Bimbo Down on the Bamboo Isle and Oh By Jingo, Oh By G, You're the Only Girl for Me. Um, yeah, if Bill's not here, sometimes he listens after the concert's over, so I'm gonna play this for him anyway. <laughs>
by Jingo. Thank you very much, folks. Well, there's those tunes out of the way. <clears throat> and I got a request. I'm happy to take requests during the concert, but I also got a lot prior to tonight's concert that I want to try and cover for you. And one of the requests was for a tune called Me Too. Ho, ho, ha, ha, Me Too. This is a pop tune of the late 20s. It fits in for tonight's theme perfectly. And uh, the song was written by Al Sherman, believe it or not, the father of the Sherman brothers. And I also recorded this a long time ago now on the CD that I did with Johnny. And we did it as a medley with another tune uh, from about the same year, 1926. So uh, let me play them for you now. The first tune is Hard to Get Gertie. And then we're going to do Ho Ho Ha Ha Me Too. young man's name that asked me for that. I think it was Benjamin. Now, yeah, the viewer numbers are a little bit down tonight. I don't know why that might be. Huh. Well, please don't forget to hit the like button. It helps with the social media algorithms and so forth. Um, and I do have, uh, or rather, I do see a number of requests here, especially on YouTube, songs that I will play. Of course, I'd be happy to do them. Um, the video feed here on my end is coming in like way after I finish playing the song. That's kind of funny. Let me refresh the page just real quick. See if that helps. Yeah, it must be. This this will help me get the chat in real time as well. Okay. 
will let me do a few more songs that I had planned ahead of time. And then for the second half of the concert, I'll be taking more requests here uh, on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but I want to play a couple of songs that I haven't done in quite a long time. In fact, possibly never on a virtual concert. I'm still coming up with songs to play for all of you that I haven't played before. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, anyway, these are all songs associated with the Duncan Sisters. Now, I absolutely love them. They were one of the great vaudeville teams of the 1920s. And I know several musicians that uh, actually met the Duncan Sisters. There were Vivian and Rosetta, and Johnny met them both. Vivian lived longer, and uh, so a few of my uh, friends in the Bay Area, Peter Minton and uh, Don Neely, the great band leader from the Royal Society Jazz Orchestra, told me that he also met uh, Vivian Duncan. Now, the Duncan sisters got their start in the early 20s. They had a big hit Broadway show called Topsy and Eva, and there were some beautiful songs written for that, like Remembering. I'm sure the show would be considered a little politically incorrect today. I'm not going to do any of the songs from that show, but... Uh, some of the songs that they introduced in the latter part of the 20s, which uh, I, I didn't say this at the beginning of the concert necessarily, but I think the late 20s is probably my very favorite period. Um, you can make a, an argument, um, how, sh how should I put it, uh, musically, that the late 20s and early 30s were really the most sophisticated time in the history of American popular music. And uh, so these are some beautiful songs. And the Duncan sisters had a pianist named Edna Fisher that worked with them for many years, made records with them. And she lived in the Bay Area. Peter knew her very well, Peter Menton. And uh, this is a gorgeous song, the music by Edna Fisher and lyrics by Rosetta and Vivian Duncan. Here's the original sheet music for the tune. And it's called Someday Soon. Let me play this for you now from 1929. One of the Duncan sisters' tunes, Sunday Soon. Someday soon. Thank you so much. Well, now, before uh, the end of the vaudeville period, right as talking pictures were taking over, the Duncan sisters made a movie, a feature-length movie for MGM. And here's some of the sheet music from the movie. 
And uh, when I found out that Johnny had met the Duncan sisters, I um, bought the movie on DVD and he and I watched the entire thing. It's probably the only time I've seen it, which was a number of years ago now. But I fell in love with a couple of the songs so much that uh, Johnny and I played a few of these as a duet. Uh, well, one of these. And, and then I decided to learn the other one. So I'm going to play two of the three songs from the movie. I'm Following You and the big production number Who's Your Hop? <laughs> and it's really quite exciting. The music and lyrics for these by the wonderful Dave Dreyer, who's kind of underrated, and Ballard McDonald, one of the great lyricists and uh, songwriters in the American Songbook. So we're going to do two songs now from the Duncan Sisters' 1929 movie, It's a Great Life. I'm Following You, and then the big uh, hot dance number, Who's Your Hot? Who's Your Hot? Excuse me. Yeah. much. There's only one more song in the movie, and I'm sailing on a sunbeam. I suppose I should really learn that one, and then I'll, I'll have them all. Well, I appreciate all of you that have tuned in tonight. Uh, don't forget, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. There's PayPal and Venmo information, 
uh, in the postings as well as a P.O. box on my website for checks. And Climbing up the ladder of love. No, I'm afraid I don't know that one. I just played Me Too. I just played it for you. You'll have to go back in the concert and watch it. I'm, I'm uh, sorry you missed it. Black Bottom was in the opening medley. And, uh, but there are some more requests I'm going to get to as well. Um, there's some that uh, you know I received ahead of time. And <laughs> frankly, I can never get to them all. I do my best. Uh, let me think what should be next. Maybe something more familiar, and uh, this is another request that came in ahead of time, but I have also already seen it in the chat. I'm surprised that Johnny didn't play this as part of his medley of songs from the late 20s, because it's one of the biggest hits of that period. And so I thought I'd do it for you now. From 1925, written by one of my favorite composers, who I have collected and researched now for a number of years, uh, he was born in West Virginia, but he got his start as a songwriter while he was living in Omaha, Nebraska, the 1910s. And then pretty quickly he moved to New York, which is where you had to be to be a big success in um, the early jazz world, uh, with the possible exception of Chicago. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm talking about Maceo Pinker. That's the man's name, and we're going to do his big hit. It originally introduced by Ben Barney's orchestra in 1925, it is now the theme song of the Harlem Globetrotters, Sweet Georgia Brown. so much. Well, I, I was thinking about doing some more Maceo Pinker tunes, uh, but uh, I might try and get some more requests in first and then use that uh, later on in the concert to fill some time, because I do know a bunch more of his songs, and the late 20s was uh, probably his biggest period as a songwriter. Um, well, I, I see... Uh, Nick Taylor's listening here tonight. He's a piano player, a friend of mine that lives in Colorado Springs, and he asked me to play a song that I absolutely love. I suppose I'm the one that probably introduced you to this, uh, Nick. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a song that was written in 1927 or 28 by the great British pianist Carol Gibbons. He wrote the music. It was recorded by Gene Austin, who just made a beautiful record of this. And then later on, Perry Como did it as well. And so, uh, anyhow, uh, this is also one of my real favorite songs. It's become a favorite of Nick's. This is uh, A Garden in the Rain. Nice to do a little ballad here. <laughs> ¶¶ 
Thank you so much. A garden in the rain. <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Isn't that a beautiful song? Gene Austin is just absolutely one of my favorite uh, vocalists. Uh, he was quite versatile, really. He did everything from parlor songs to jazz to ballads, you know. <sighs> oh, my pleasure, Nick. I love it as much as you do, like I said. I did Ramona earlier. That was part of the opening medley. You know, uh, as part of this Music by Decade series, I had someone request that I um, type up the full list of all the songs that I played and put it, post it at least on YouTube for future ref reference. And uh, I may do that when all is said and done. Um, I do have lists of the songs. I'd be happy to do that. might make it interesting for people. Okay, well, send me some more requests. I saw a request here from Leo for Stardust as well. I could certainly play that. Um, another song from the late 20s that uh, was not in the opening medley, but was certainly a, an enormous hit of the period. I feel like there was a couple more things I was going to play that, I've, that I forgot. I don't know Alice Blue Gown by heart, and I don't know Collegiate, unfortunately. Hmm. I'm checking Facebook here for some requests. I see UB Blake. I, you know, uh, there's not too much of too many of his tunes from the same period. Uh, but memories of well, memories of you is from 1930. I'll, let me save that for the 1930s concert, and let me do. Let me go ahead and do uh, Stardust for Leo here from 1929, written by Hoagy Carmichael. 
my favorite writers of the period, who was from Indianapolis, Indiana. And it, this, believe it or not, this tune was originally written as a piano solo, which was played up-tempo. And then Mitchell Parrish wrote the words for the song, and it became kind of a ballad. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit more to the story there, but uh, I play it as sort of, sort of medium tempo, somewhere in between, in order to try and satisfy all, uh, all the, the historians and the people who are used to hearing it as a ballad. Um, part of this is, once again, a Johnny Maddox arrangement. Stardust, or as we say in Durango, steer dust. Thank you so much. Stardust. Yeah, so, so someone says, I guess if we request Stardust enough times, Adam will play it. Yeah, I, I try and do that, especially if I get two or three requests for the same song. My favorite record uh, of that piece of Stardust is actually the Johnny Maddox record, which he made very early in his career when he was younger than I am now, uh, 1951. He recorded Stardust in Nashville at uh, the recording studio there with a guitarist that no one had heard of yet named Chet Atkins. And I think it's a really neat record uh, because uh, it's played kind of up-tempo, you know, the way the piece might have originally been done. Anyhow, uh, what else will we like, everybody? I've got a feeling I'm falling. Well, I could certainly do that. I'm going to do some more Fats Waller, and I'm kind of th uh, thinking... I'll save that for the end of the concert. I, I didn't mean more. I haven't done any yet. But, uh, uh, yeah, that's going to be kind of the, the rapper upper for tonight is some Fat Swaller. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do Agnes Behaven a little bit later on. Um, you know what I'll do next is I'm going to go back to Maceo Pinkard. Um, Marilyn, I saw that you had asked for the Potomac River Blues. I, I do a medley of about four of his tunes. Maybe you don't know these. Let me play these for you. Uh, and these are all from about 1925 through 1929. And um, it the medley starts out with Here Comes the Showboat, which was not written for the musical showboat, but was later interpolated into the show. And then um, it's one of the uh, Pinkert pop tunes that I like called Come On Baby. 
And then one of his big hits, which was Don't Be Like That, which was featured by Helen Kane, who was the inspiration for Betty Boop. And then uh, the last song in the medley is Sweet Man, one of his tunes that kind of has the Charleston rhythm to it from 1925. So here is my uh, complete Maceo Pinkard medley. Here we go. I haven't played this in a while. <laughs> Thank you. 
much. Some more of the music of Maceo Pinkard. I just found an original publicity photograph of him from probably from the 20s, uh, and I had never been able to find one before. I was really thrilled with that. I meant to bring it out and show it to you. We'll have to do that sometime. Oh, uh, you know, I, I got a request here from Gary on YouTube for Get Out and Get Under the Moon. I do know that one by heart. I just played Don't Be Like That, uh, but uh, I could do Get Out and Get, get Under the Moon by memory. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that I last played it, so let me try it for you now. Another tune of that great period of the late 20s. so much. Get out and get under the moon. <laughs> oh, well, um, I recorded that with Domingo Manquayo on the CD that we did together called Take Me to the Land of Jazz. If you like that, get the CD off my website. Um, yeah, I've already done Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue, and let's see. Here pretty soon I'm going to start doing the, the Fats Waller songs. Let me check all three websites here to see if there's a few requests that I missed that I can get to before the concert's over. Let me check real quick. Well, don't see any requests on Twitch. Sorry to the folks over there. We'll see how many I can get to. YouTube numbers went up a little bit. That's fantastic. Well, let me play the Fats Waller request that I just received a few minutes ago, uh, because this is a favorite song of mine, also recorded by Gene Austin. And uh, for some reason, Fats Waller seemed to have written a number of his very best and most successful tunes in 1929 which was uh, his kind of his banner year, I suppose you might say. And so this was one of them called I've Got a Feeling I'm Falling. I even know the verse. <laughs>
very much. I've got a feeling I'm falling. Falling for nobody else but you. You know, Fats Waller was not only a virtuoso stride pianist, but a really wonderful melodist. He wrote beautiful melodies that were sophisticated. <laughs> I, I think it's really funny. In his contract, Fats Waller had a clause that, uh, where he refused to play any boogie-woogie whatsoever. He felt that was beneath him. <laughs> that was in his contract for wherever he performed on tour. Well, uh, now maybe we should do the even more famous Fats Waller tunes, both from the year 1929. I think he wrote these for reviews that were at a nightclub in Harlem called Connie's... Uh, it was, the show was called Connie's Hot Chocolate. I think both shows uh, were um, done at the same nightclub, Connie's Inn, something like that. Anyhow, uh, we're going to do Ain't Misbehaving, complete with the original verse that a lot of people don't play, and then Honeysuckle Rose, uh, also including the original verse. Uh, I love Gene Austin's record of Ain't Misbehaving. If you've never heard it, check it out, because it, it has a very different style to it than the way you usually hear it as a, like a stride piano solo. Uh, it's more of a ballad, including the lyrics uh, to the verse and so forth. So here we go with Ain't Misbehavin' and Honeysuckle Rose. Thank you. 
Suckle Rose. As Fast Waller said, uh, one never knows, do one. Well, those are all just really wonderful tunes. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for next week's concert, but uh, my mother had kind of a fun idea this afternoon. She suggested I just play something from every different era that I play, and uh, that's doable. I, and I can explain the difference in musical styles going back to the earliest ragtime, from cakewalks to blues to uh, jazz and stride and novelty piano. That might be kind of fun, just like a, a musical journey through the years, something like that. Uh, I'll come up with a better title. If you think that's a good idea, let me know. Uh, if you agree with my mother, I think she had a fantastic idea. <laughs> and uh, um, That will be next week's concert. And, oh, well. It looks like someone mentioned a handful of keys. So why don't I play that to round out tonight's concert? From, again, from 1929, the Fats Waller classic, one of the two great test pieces of stride piano, a handful of keys. everybody. 
There's a handful of keys. I try and play it pretty close to the way Fats Waller did it on uh, his first record of it in 1929. Uh, difficult to play, but I love it. And I hope you have all enjoyed uh, tonight's concert. I really appreciate all of you listening. Don't forget to share the streams. Um, and I appreciate your support of these virtual concerts. There's tip information on Venmo and PayPal. And uh, I will be doing another virtual concert on all three websites next Sunday night. And you know what? I th it, is Monday. it is Mother's Day. So I think I will do exactly what she, she suggested, which is a concert devoted to uh, all the different eras that I play and kind of demonstrate the difference between all of them. Uh, that would be a fun little theme that I haven't done. It's a little better than, I think, just doing a request night or a miscellaneous night. Uh, this might make it more interesting. And, um, you know, I didn't mention yet tonight, the next two in-person events I have, if you want to come in person, are the Old Time Piano Championship in Oxford, Mississippi, and the Scott Joplin Festival in Sedalia, Missouri. So don't forget that as well. And I sure look forward to seeing all of you uh, next Sunday night. So join me then. Thank you, folks, and good night for now.